three, five, six, seven, five. Let's get it. Welcome to the channel. This is Iggy MB5679. And this is Get Truth or Die Line. Struggles are required in order to survive in life. Because in order to stand up, you gotta know what it's like to fall. And I know what that's like. So if you praise on my demise, get a refund. I ain't going nowhere. They got secrets that they don't want you to know. But if you find out what they are, you're not allowed to tell nobody or they will silence you. Now don't worry about who the fuck I am. But if you're so curious to find out, just look up the 13th Amendment. You'll see. <clears throat> it's time to break the chain. It's time to change the cycle. Do you want that to be your sister? Do you want that to be your wife? Do you want that to be your mother? The 9-11 is we didn't have a strategy, we didn't have bipartisan agreement, we didn't have American understanding of it, and we had instead a policy coup in this country. A coup. A policy coup. Some hard-nosed people took over the direction of American policy, and they never bothered to inform the rest of us. I went through the Pentagon 10 days after 9-11. I couldn't stay away from Mother Army. I went back there to see Don Rumsfeld. I'd worked for him as a White House fellow in the 1970s. All this is in the book. And, um, and I said, am I doing okay on CNN? He said, yeah, 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 fine. He said, uh, I'm thinking about it. He says, I read your book. And uh, he said, uh, this is a book that talks about the Kosovo campaign. And he said, I just want to tell you, he said, nobody's going to tell us where or when we can bomb. Nobody. He said, I'm thinking of calling this a floating coalition. What do you think about that? I said, well, sir, uh, thanks for reading my book. And, uh, well, uh, he said, thanks. That's all the time I've got. Really? And um, I went downstairs. I was leaving the Pentagon, and an officer from the Joint Staff called me into his office and said, I, I want you to know, he said, sir, we're going to attack Iraq. And I said, why? He said, we don't know. He said, uh, I said, well, did they tie Saddam to 9-11? He said, uh, no. He said, but um, I guess it's they don't know what to do about terrorism. And so uh, the it, they think, but they can attack states and they want to look strong. And so I guess they think if they take down a state, it will intimidate the terrorists. And, you know, it's like that old saying, he said, if the only tool you have is a hammer, then every problem has to be a nail. Well, I walked out of there pretty upset, and then um, we attacked Afghanistan. I was pretty happy about that. We should have. And then I came back to the Pentagon about six weeks later. I saw the same officer. I said, why, uh, why haven't we attacked Iraq? We still going to attack Iraq? He said, oh, sir. He says, it's worse than that. He said, um, he pulled up a piece of paper off his desk. He said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office. It says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. I said, seven, seven countries in five years. I said, is that a classified memo? He said, yes, sir. I said, well, don't show it to me. He was about to show it to me. He said, because I want to talk about it. And I, I, I sat on this information for a long time, for about, Six or eight months, I, I was so stunned by this, I couldn't begin to talk about it. And I couldn't believe it would really be true, but that's actually what happened. Uh, these people took control of the policy in the United States. And I realized then, it came back to me, a 1991 meeting I had with Paul Wolfowitz, 
You know, in 2001, he was Deputy Secretary of Defense, but in 1991, he was the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy. It's the number three position in the Pentagon. And I had gone to see him when I was a one-star general. I was commanding the National Training Center. I had met him one time. He said, if you ever get to Washington, come look me up. They always say that. Well, I was there in Washington. It was a Friday afternoon. I'd visited Colin Powell. He'd given me five minutes of his precious time and sent me on my way, and I was bored in the Pentagon. And, and I thought, I'll just go, who can I see? I'll say, I think I'll see Wolfowitz. So I called and up there. He was available. Scooter Libby came to the door. I met Scooter for the first time, and he brought me in. And uh, I said to Paul, I said, and this is 1991, I said, Mr. Secretary, you must be pretty happy with the performance of the troops in, in Desert Storm. And he said, uh, well, yeah, he said, but, but not really, he said, because the truth is we should have gotten rid of Saddam Hussein, and we didn't. And this was just after the Shia uprising in, in March of 91, which we had provoked, and then we kept our troops on the sidelines and didn't intervene. And he said, but one thing we did learn, he said, we learned that we can use our military in the region, in the Middle East, and the Soviets won't stop us. He said, and we've got about five or ten years to clean up those old Soviet client regimes, Syria, Iran, Iraq, before the next great superpower comes on to challenge us. And it was like, you know, I'm coming out of the Mojave Desert. i am been training troops. I haven't been thinking geostrategy for some time. And suddenly a guy just sort of shoves this nugget at you. Well, you remember it. It was a pretty stunning thing. You mean the purpose of the military is to, to, to start wars and change governments? It's not to sort of deter conflict? We're going to invade countries? And, I, 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 you know, my mind was spinning. And uh, I put that aside. It was like a nugget that you hold on to. This country was taken over by a group of people with a policy coup. Wolfowitz and Cheney and Rumsfeld and you could name a half dozen other collaborators from the Project for a New American Century. They wanted us to destabilize the Middle East, turn it upside down, make it under our control. It went back to those comments in 1991. Now, did anybody ever tell you that? Was there a national dialogue on this? Did senators and congressmen stand up and denounce this plan? Was there a full-fledged American debate on it? Absolutely not. And there still isn't. And that's why we're failing in Iraq. Because Iran and Syria know about the plan. All you have to do is read the... the, the Weekly Standard, and, and in, listen to Bill Crystal, and he blabbermouths it all over the world. Richard Pearl the same way. They could hardly wait to finish Iraq so they could move into Syria. It was like a laydown. Oh, our legions are going to go in there. This wasn't what the American people voted George Bush into office for. Well, they didn't actually vote him into office, but it wasn't what many of the people who. It wasn't what he campaigned on. He campaigned on a humble foreign policy, the most arrogant foreign policy in American history. He campaigned on no peacekeeping, no nation building, and here he is with Afghanistan and Iraq. It's astonishing. So the root of the problem is not how many troops are in Iraq. Please believe me. Don't be mad, if you're a Democrat, at your Democratic congressman because they can't reduce the troops and frustrate the president. That's not the issue. And if you're a Republican, don't be mad at the Democrats because they're fussing with the troops. Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, if you're an American, you ought to be concerned about the strategy of the United States in this region. What is our aim? What is our purpose? Why are we there? Why are Americans dying in this region? That is the issue. The truth is about the Middle East is, had there been no oil there, it would be like Africa. Nobody is threatening to intervene in Africa. The problem is the opposite. We keep asking for people to intervene and stop it. And there's, uh, there's no question that the presence of petroleum throughout the region has sparked great power involvement. Whether that was the specific motivation for the coup or not, I can't tell you, but 
but there was definitely, there's always been this attitude that somehow we could intervene and use it. Thank you.